Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And boy, oh boy, boy, oh boy, this is uh, this is some dismal Disney news. Remember Ike Perlmutter, the, the head of Marvel who basically got pushed out of Marvel and Kevin Feige took his job? Well, apparently, apparently, uh, he has been uh, behind the machinations to get this uh, investor group, Nelson Peltz, to take on Disney, that he is actually putting this guy up to uh, trying to push either Bob Iger out or push for somebody on the board. Well, they're yeah, they're claiming that they aren't trying to get rid of Bob Iger. They but claim says otherwise. There's there's uh, there's some evidence and some of the stuff that Disney is saying makes it out like they are going to possibly push for a new CEO. Now, here's the thing that's really weird about all of this: Ike Perlmutter absolutely positively hates uh, Bob Iger, as I understand it, because okay. Ike Perlmutter came with the Marvel acquisition. He was in charge of Marvel. They bought Marvel. He had a, a seat at the table with Marvel. This is a guy who, you know, as many comic book media outlets like to point out at every chance they get, uh, is a guy who gave Trump his pen to sign documents oh, with yes. I forgot about friends that. with Donald Trump. But this guy was running Marvel and then Disney bought Marvel and uh, they basically pushed him out and uh, Kevin Feige took over. And here we are three years later, a pandemic later, and Disney is in a potential uh, proxy fight. Well, to be fair, I don't think it was a mistake to get rid of him at Marvel. Probably not. I really don't. I mean, Pearl wasn't Waters. he the one that had, like, what was that show they were doing and the, and the budget was like horrible for it? And it did, mis it did terrible. Oh God, yeah, he was the one who was behind the uh, the ABC shows and, and they the, were the like, Inhumans. The, and they, that was yeah, and yeah, it was, and, and it was awful. And to be a vindictive a hole, as I understand it, Pearl Mutter was like, "Well, we can't use any mutants. We're gonna we're gonna make everybody Inhumans now. That's what we're gonna do." So um, yeah, there, there's a lot. There's a whole backstory there, but basically, yeah, he got pushed out of the way. Kevin Feige. Uh, is now front and center, and this guy, I guess, has an axe to grind with Bob Iger specifically, and he was pulling the strings behind the scenes to push uh, Nelson Peltz into challenging Allegedly. Disney. Allegedly. Allegedly. But everybody seems to think that that's what's going on. So not only do we have the CFO of Disney stabbing Bob Chapek in the back, trying to you know get herself in potentially as the CEO of Disney, and Bob Iger coming back, but now we've got the revenge of like Perlmutter too. <laughs> so to add, you know what I'm saying? Like, like grab the popcorn. This is like trying to follow. This is like trying to follow some really convoluted TV show. Like, it's, okay, it's trying to follow, follow the new Marvel in the multiverse. Pretty much, yeah. I, actually, I think it's funny. I think it's like it's more entertaining than some of the Marvel shows as of late, Marvel films as of late. No, oh definitely God. more entertaining than than uh, the Last Jedi. That's it. the the Disney The Disney drama is more entertaining than a lot of the entertainment that Disney has has been putting out, and it's gonna get weird, guys. And the thing is, we told you so. We told you so because actually, you know what uh, Peltz is saying uh, is that one of the biggest problems with Disney is they overspent on Fox and that yeah, so has they, hurt them tremendously. So they put out a thing, what well, was filed with the SEC and it's what they're going to send to their shareholders. And they mentioned the Fox thing in there, which they overspent on Fox. I'm sorry, but they totally did. And they kind of gloss over that. So yeah, I already covered this on, on Pirates and Princesses today, but they put this out, the SEC is what they're going to send to shareholders. And that the current Disney board is the right board for shareholders because they don't want anybody vo voted off. They want, uh, Nelson Peltz wants to put put their own people in. Uh, so let, somebody in a chair. Yeah, so let's let's talk about this. Before we get into it any further, we got into it pretty far, but before we go in, uh, you know, up to our elbows into this Disney Bullshit. boardroom drama, uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, over 288, almost 289,000 subs. We do talk a lot about Disney having worked in around the company for a number of years, uh, contractors, uh, media people, PR people. And yeah, you know, People say we hate Disney. We don't hate Disney. We don't like the direction the company is going in. I don't know if Nelson Peltz is necessarily the right direction for the company to go in, but the fact that uh, Disney has gone unchallenged for so long after they've made piss poor decision mm -hmm. after piss poor decision, uh, culminating in Chapek's ousting, by the way, he's getting $20 million. 
And the rest of his money they owed him, I think, for his last contract or that that buy that as contract. I forget exactly. Yeah, which. and that's that's actually a drop in the bucket compared to what Iger got the first time. So Iger left, got a big fat paycheck the first. Now he's coming back, and he'll get a big fat paycheck. And he'll get another big fat paycheck. Well. Yeah, it's it's crazy. So yeah, walk me walk me through this. This is basically they're trying okay. to preemptively stop. As I understand it, pelts from putting somebody in on the board. This is what they want to send to shareholders for their 2023 annual shareholder meeting as their, you know, their presentation so that you don't, you know, vote them out. Yes. Okay, so it starts out with the current Disney board is the right board for shareholders. And if you go down, it talks about why they filed it and where it was filed and all that. Independently, highly qualified board has provided strong oversight focused on delivering superior, sustained shareholder value. You will notice there is a trend about shareholder value. People are like, there is some language later on that sounds that like they're going to do some more flexibility and value at the theme parks, but only if shareholders are going to make money, because that's what this is all about. Yeah. And I think it's hilarious because they go on about their shareholders and or their board members. And I want to point out again, the board members were there when the bad decisions were being made. They went along with the bad decisions being made. So that is going to come up, I'm sure, because it's going to be like, well, okay, so we got rid of Bob Chapek, but you guys enabled these piss poor decisions that led to the stock cratering. Um, And yeah, I understand the world has macroeconomic challenges, but Disney fell further than most companies. Right. They're like the board regularly reviews and is heavily involved in setting the strategic direction of the company. Well, yeah, failed there. And then they talked about how they definitely navigated the pandemic and oversaw the, the direct-to-consumer. They, re, they, they, they actually restructured the company, but that was under Chapek. Oh, so that, this is the thing. They're, 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 okay, so they got rid of Bob Chapek, but they're like, here's all the things Bob Chapek did. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> but we got rid of him. And then people are going to be like, why'd you get rid of Really, why did you get rid of Bob Chapek if things were so damn good? Wait, demonstrated a focus on succession with creation of a special succession planning committee that you just made up. Like, this is one of our key components of why we're great. You literally just did this. It's like like in the last month or two. And then they're talking about the incoming board chairman with a new director reinforced skills and experience directly relevant to current priorities. Because Mark Parker is a director since 2016, and he's going to be the new board chairman, which we talked about before. Uh, yeah, now there's a whole story behind him and the stuff he goes for, which, you know, yeah. So I don't know how that's going to go, but... Then I didn't hear about this, but okay. And then they add this Carolyn Everson to the board in 2022 and, and a strong background in building world-class media and digital advertising. Because at Meta and Microsoft. And so, well, Meta, that explains why they're going all in at Meta. And then what else is interesting was I think Bob Iger, prior to coming back, wasn't he going all in on Meta? Yes, he actually was. Well, that's, he, that's a really interesting coincidence. Um, he actually was, if I remember correctly, he was going to invest heavily into a Metaverse company. Uh, like hundreds of millions of dollars into it. Uh, now I don't think it was owned by like Facebook Meta, but I think he was getting into you know, VR that's, and all that's, that. That's wow! What a what a what, how that what a up. strange coincidence. Yeah, yeah, but I love this. The key overall board stats: ten of eleven directors are independent per New York Stock Exchange guidelines. Six-year average director tenure. Five directors have Fortune 500 CEO or CFO experience, and seven directors are either gender or ethnically ethnically diverse. Not ethically, ethnically. What's it I'm mean? sure some of them are ethically diverse too, but that's another story. Yeah, what's it mean to be ethically diverse? I don't know. We probably ask some of these people on the board. Um, then here's where they get the keys that we're talking about. The key strategic strategic changes that management is currently working on. They're reorganizing leadership structure because you already did. You got rid of Bob Chapek and now you're putting Bob Iger back and now you're trying to get the decision making and the, the, the creatives again because you got your ass called out for that. But, yeah. the, but again... The board went along with it and renewed Bob Chapek's contract. Yep. Putting that out. Yep. They're going to implement cost reduction plan and streamlining our organizational structure to enhance productivity. That means they're going to get rid of people and make you, you know, account for everything. And hence that discussion where you couldn't even go on trips without authorization. Yes. Yes. Uh, It's going to get really cheap over there, I think, for a lot of people. I mean, they were used to a lot of these Disney people were used to whining and dining. Uh, there, there really was no ceiling on it. I know because they used to spend heavily on influencers and uh, I don't think that's going to happen much anymore. Prioritizing streaming profitability in addition to revenue and subscriber growth. Well, I thought you were already doing that. 
Mm -hmm. And then improving the guest in the parks, improving the guest experience by providing more value and flexibility. And he's, he's going, yes, I've done more value by making more like two months worth of tickets at Disneyland, $104. Oh, Meanwhile, free parking. Free parking. Oh, again. yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, Walt Disney World doesn't get jack shit other than like, oh, you get the free parking at the hotel, which they didn't charge for a couple years ago anyway. So, you know what this reminds me of? OK, because I don't think Disney thought they were going to be in this position. What this reminds me of is like when hurry up, make up shit. Yeah, because it's like okay, um, you need to show some results by Friday, or you're getting fired. And I saw one of my bosses do this one time, where it was like it was clear he was not doing his job very well, and uh, he all of a sudden started had all these uh, you know presentations, and he was asking everybody for in the department for numbers and all this stuff so he could make a case to the CEO as to why he should, should stay. And he didn't get to stay. He actually got gone. But I think, yeah, they're like, oh, shit's getting real. We got to be like, oh, yeah, we're going to um, 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 free parking and um, 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 ticket prices are down. Um, oh, um, oh, but um, um, only um, one of the um, parks because I can do that really quick. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah whatever's world. quick and easy to make it look like. We're actually right. doing something. Because if you look yes. at that that announcement, there's a bunch of things that are, are gonna be like they're like they're like stupid shitty things like we're giving everybody free photos of their rides. And and but Disney World, if you buy Genie Plus and you spend extra money, then you can have the same thing at Disneyland's getting it for free. And oh this will all happen sometime down the road eventually. The, you know, all like oh in the next few months. So it looks like you put something out there. Yeah. To put onto this this presentation, mm. but it's like for a lot of it, it's oh down the road. Yeah, you, you waited until the night before your report was due. And the one they did give him for free to, was like your traction photos. Everybody's yes. over there with their camera taking pictures whatever, of them on the screen anyway. Yeah, whatever you can do immediately. It's not like you know they're they're making any major major changes. Um, so here's the thing: because if they get a member on the board, supposedly they want say in who the next CEO gets to be and the plan of succession. Because right now, supposedly Iger is only going to be there for two years, but we know how this goes. You know, Iger was going to leave for how many years, and he didn't leave. And I think they're kind of like, no, we're gonna we're gonna have make a, sure he leaves in two years. Yeah, we're he gonna can stay. Yeah, for now. But he has to leave in two you years. You have to leave in two years, and we're gonna help pick your replacement, Bob, because. We can't have another Chapek situation. Yeah, we, we can't, can't have another Reedy Creek situation. Another Reedy Creek um, situation. So Nelson Peltz does not understand Disney's businesses and lacks the skills and experience to assist the board in delivering shareholder value in a rapidly shifting media ecosystem. I would argue that Disney hasn't understood how to deliver shareholder value in a rapidly shifting media ecosystem because your stock prices went down the shitter. Yeah, people are people are calling their finance uh, publications calling out. They're like Disney dropped more than average. Like yeah, Disney's they dropped way more than they should. But way more. It's like when somebody who went, filed for bankruptcy tries to tell you how to to make money. Yeah, it's like that. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not saying I want this other person in either, but I think but I have to point out the irony. The yeah. irony is strong. Now we go into why Bob Iger is amazing and needs to be the CEO. So there could be something more going on here. And this is what's interesting. And some people are speculating that this is that maybe the end game isn't just to pick a successor for Iger, but actually push Iger out before his time is up. Because I guess Perlmutter and Iger do not get along at all. And they're, I mean, it's all speculation at this point, but it does seem like they're trying to make a case for Bob Iger. If Bob Iger is a done deal and he's going to stay for two years, why, why do you have to show what he's done? Everybody, everybody knows what he's done. But what's funny to me is, okay, we're looking at the, the, the stock uh, appreciation, okay? Yeah. Under Bob Iger. Now, that was all up until when the pandemic hit, which you're not taking into account. Yes. When the pandemic hit, that's when it starts to go down. And then it was Bob Chapek. And under Chapek, it went down even more. And when Bob Iger came back, it dropped even more. It dropped lower than under Chapek. But they're not mentioning that. No, they're not. They're Yeah, so they're not showing the crash. And that's what the issue is. The issue is Disney dropped off an effing cliff. Uh, they're actually blaming Iger's acquisition of Fox as being a major. Well, I think that, that is a lot of it. Yeah, and I, I remember Elizabeth Warren called them out about why they were giving sh dividends out, but they were spent on Fox and and stuff like that. But I want to, you know, it's 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 interesting that they're deliberately, you know, putting the 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 information into a certain context. And I also want to point out that when the stock cratered and went down to like eighty four or whatever it was a mm. share, um, it was the board that was in charge that was there when it happened. Okay, so this. Well, did you see this though with the quotes about why Bob Iger is amazing and his acquisitions? CNBC. What is up with them in CNBC? 
Because every time they have interviews, it's always on CNBC. It is. CNBC. It is. Oh, one's The Hollywood Reporter. CNBC and CNBC. Yeah, it's very, very interesting. I mean, they are a, a, a financial, mostly a financial. But they're a competitor. But still, yes, every time they poop, CNBC is right there to sniff it. So the Fox transaction was critical to better position. Okay. No, it wasn't. So this is, this is what the, uh, the yeah. sticking point with Nelson Peltz is. This is the sticking point with a lot of people. My God, we have, we have talked about this at length and everybody else like glosses over it. What really put Disney in Hertzville was they burned through their cash reserves, massively overpaying for Fox, and they've got jack shit this show for it. Because really, there's not a lot of uh, there's not a lot of meat on the bone at Fox. There's not a lot of stuff they can do anything with. Uh, most of it, it was basically Rupert Murdoch's garage sale. He sold you his old shit. You bought all of his old shit for way, way, way too much money. Think it was like Antique Roadshow, and you're going to make new Home Alone movies, new Alien movies, new Predator movies, and you're going to make tons and tons of money, and that didn't happen, right? Well, this, this is, I, can't, I have to laugh about this. Well, he went on, I'm just saying, he went on to, to go buy Tubi, and he's already building another studio and making new stuff, you know, so he, he comes out ahead. I just love this. Okay, compelling strategic rationale. We broadened our portfolio of world-class IP. I would argue that a lot of that IP is worthless. And then you try, yeah, you also took IP that had a strong fan base and you made shitty things like Home Sweet Home Alone and trashed it. And now we got the, what's the, what's the new National Treasure show? Oh, yeah. And I don't think it's doing that great either. So you basically took things that had value and yet completely tanked it. So they got the Simpsons and Family Guy out of it, but they nerfed them. And beyond that, like, was that worth seventy-one billion dollars no. for the Simpsons? You got the stuff, but it did not. It's not worth seventy-one no. billion. Like, significantly enhanced our content output capability because we bought other studios. But you sold a lot of that stuff off, especially the video game stuff. Enabled acceleration of global T DTC expansion ahead of peers. Um, then they oh we got these great people who are working for us now and they're going on and they talk about Sky we didn't buy Sky we sold our stake at fifteen billion yeah but that's still you still are in the hole fifty some billion yeah and they're like would try and have preferred that competitor own it yeah because the reason they overpaid for Fox was they got in a bidding war with uh, Comcast but Comcast my understanding is Comcast had no real interest in it they just wanted Disney to pay as well, much they might as they have initially, could have. but then after Disney was being ridiculous Iger was just running it up they're like let them have it yeah but yeah. they're gonna pay as much as we can make them pay they have it and he wouldn't back down because Iger will not admit he's wrong and he will not back down, even though he knows it's colossally fucking stupid. Yes. He'll keep going because, well, he can't show weakness. And, you know, backing down shows weakness. And, you know, can't have that. Can't do that. That's so Bob. So it is so Bob. But I love this. Avatar. Two, two of the top ten highest grossing films. And it had this much box office. Yes. At, how, what, at what cost did it cost you to S do those movies? $71 billion to make a billion, maybe a couple hundred million dollars profit off of Avatar. Was it worth it? Yeah, you're not putting it in context. X-Men, right. 6.1 billion uh, cumulative global box office. Before you bought it, you're going to ruin it. Everybody knows it. Are, are they going to be called well, X-Persons now or whatever? Yeah, they're going to ruin the X-Men. X-People? X-Men and Fantastic Four are money in the bank. The reason... Well, they'll that, ruin it. They'll find a way. Absolutely. The reason that... that Fox had the X-Men and the Fantastic Four and Sony had Spider-Man where those were the only three Marvel franchises back in the 90s when these deals were made that were worth anything. They were the best-selling comics. And to, to destroy the X-Men, but they, look, they're, they're doing it already. Marvel Comics is destroying the X-Men comic books too. The X-Men, right. it was hands down, X-Men number one is still, to the best of my knowledge, the reboot of X-Men, well, it wasn't a reboot, but Jim Lee's X-Men number one is still the highest selling single issue floppy comic book of all time. Okay, to this day. That's how popular the <laughs> And they probably have records for were. some of the worst selling comic books. I'm sure they do. Um, from Marvel ever in the recent history. And, you know, that's something else I want to bring up. Meanwhile, I was talking about Marvel. You're talking about increasing your output and all this great, all you own, all this stuff, and Marvel is this great acquisition. Meanwhile... The, what we reportedly hearing and what we talked about was the special effects studios don't want to work with you because you don't pay people fairly and you overwork and underpay. So you're going to have a big problem here pretty soon if that's true. Yeah. They want to unionize bait mostly from its way it sounds for Disney and Marvel. Oh, God. You know, so weird about this too, because they bought, they bought Fox and they canceled like three quarters of the movies in the pipeline. Some of the movies right. they had, I think would have actually made money. They shut down blue sky 
They should, you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like, it's, it's like, what did you get exactly? You're not doing anything currently with the X-Men or the Fantastic Four, really. So, you know, Avatar, okay, but you're already doing stuff with Avatar because you had Avatar in the theme parks. So was it worth $71 billion is what they're asking? And the, the resounding answer to that is no. No, but they're trying to just gloss over and say, well, we got all this stuff out of it. But even if you add all that together, since no, not counting what happened before Disney bought it, because they keep wanting to about, bet, bank it on, well, here's what they did before we got it. No, what's it going to do under you? Because so far your stuff has, is not performing where it could be because you guys make really shitty, dumb decisions. So they're also saying that the dividend suspension was driven by the pandemic. Well, not, that, they, that was what happened. Yeah, but they, they didn't reinstate it. No, and they didn't. Other companies why. have. I'm getting dividends on my other stocks. Uh-huh. I'm not getting, well, I'm not getting anything off Disney because I sold all my Disney stock. But I have it. You but. still have Disney stock, but I sold all mine. I'm like, yeah, the brain was on the wall. I'm like, Disney's going to crater. I'm selling while I can. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting dividends. So what's the excuse now? Because the pandemic's over and you guys supposedly have record profits and everything's fine and dandy. The parks are great. Everything's fantastic. What's the problem? And that's what they're going to hit the shareholders with because the shareholders at the end of the day, they want to know what's in it for them. And they're going to be like, hey, yeah, other people are getting dividends. They're paying dividends. Disney's not. What's the real problem? Because it's not the pandemic. The pandemic's over. Yeah. You know. So it's like, yeah, here's what they're saying. And oh, here's our chart of how everything he said is wrong. Uh, we, we lost money, but the thought of this is true. They, they they lost money on Disney Cruise Lines. A lot of it is pandemic related because yeah. they, they had it closed down for fifteen months. Their ship was their ship was delayed. The, a lot of those things are tied to pandemic, and that is fair. Yeah. Um. So this is what Trinan's missing. They said that you buy or sell Hulu. They have to buy Hulu, or they have to get out of the streaming business. Not necessarily, but the thing is, is that yeah, not only did they pay seventy some billion dollars to get the Fox part of Hulu. Right, so they have controlling because it was it was three partners. It was basically Disney, Fox, and Comcast. We still have to pay twenty five billion to Com. Is it billion? Yeah, I think so. Billion to Comcast. Yeah, yes, by to next bu- year to buy out the. So, if if they were doing this just to get Hulu, like they still have to pay a ridiculous amount of money to have all of Hulu, and at that point. You know, they're already kind of working toward. Um, I think a plan B. It seems like they're putting more stuff on the Disney Plus. But they've already got so much money sunk in the Hulu, you might as well just bite the bullet and pay the rest of it. And well, that's what they're going to do. They have to. They yeah. have to pay the rest from Comcast by 2024. Or there's no content, but Disney content. But 2024. It. It's funny because Comcast, meanwhile, Universal's announcing all these new parks they're yeah. going to do and all this other stuff they're going to do. They're going to. I, I guarantee you. I guarantee you. If they want to go for the jugular, they're going to bring that up. They're going to be like, well, if it was just the pandemic. It was just this. It was just that. How come your direct competitor, Comcast, is in much, much better shape than you are? They're expanding the parks. They're, you know, they're doing fine. They're doing fine, but you're not. And they'll be like, well, they have internet, too, which is true. But, but you know, I mean, from, from my point of view, Disney basically paid Rupert Murdoch to go start another Fox Kinda. as a competitor. Good you know time. what I'm saying? With Tubi, it's, it's ridiculous. So what else? I mean, that goes on. I mean, there's a timeline here. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, Disney shareholders must carefully analyze his pelt statements to differentiate facts from fiction. Of course, they put it, there's no links here. I'm hoping when they send this out, they actually put links here because you basically are trying to argue these are the actual facts, but you need to provide links to prove why those are the actual facts or in what context those are being presented. And they don't have them in here, but they might have them when they mail it out. Well, okay. So I think if this is what's going on, that they, they want to get rid of Iger, or I mean, Iger is a band aid, but they, they I, I do understand that they want a say in who the next CEO of Disney is. Um, the Phantom Menace is actually Ike Perlmutter. This is this is like dropped today. They're like Disney uh, skewers Nelson Peltz as lacking skills and experience, which we talked about, reveals Marvel chair Isaac Perlmutter backed the activist investor. Now, again, um, he does not like he does not like Bob Iger at all. And he seems like a very uh, vindictive person. And he's just been kind of waiting. He has those nasty eyes. He's got those nasty eyes. Yeah, he does. Uh, you know, plus he gave Trump his pen. That automatically means he's a bad person. Well, I don't know, but and I had nothing in on that. But I, I have he, not heard good things about. I have not. Heard, I have not. As far as Marvel's concerned, and you know, he kind of ruled with an iron fist, and he'd be like one of the bad guys in a comic. Let's put it that way. I mean, back in the, when comic bad guys were bad guys, and not just somebody who you know I voted for an orange man and wore a red and white hat. So here on The Hollywood Reporter, behind Disney's activist investor battle, uh, Marvel mogul's revenge play, 
Uh, as activist shareholder Nelson Peltz presses a long shot fight for a seat on Disney's board with help from former Marvel honcho Ike Perlmutter, Bob Iger appears to be solidifying his control. Well, they're trying very hard to make sure that the share that the that the shareholders don't make changes that the Disney board and, and uh, Iger don't want. Yeah, so this is interesting. Um, so Peltz and his friend, Ike Perlmutter, the former Marvel Entertainment CEO who has some scores to settle with Iger dating back to 2015, can represent a tenacious, expensive, and distracting problem for Iger and the Disney board at a time when the entertainment company faces the same massive challenges affecting other legacy entertainment companies. Uh, the development adds pressure as the company faces a two-year ticking clock to find a successor for Iger. An effort led by Disney's new chairman, Nike exec Mark Parker, may also restrict Iger's ability to maneuver as he might have wanted. Yeah, because Iger's not going to be able to just say, hey, this is who I'm going to hire. It's going to be like, no, we need to just, <laughs> yeah. you know. And here's the thing, too. I wonder if Perlmutter can come in and be like, hey, you know, when I was in charge of Marvel completely, uh, the movies were doing much better. No, well, that is a fair argument. Yeah, now Marvel is a freaking joke, you know, because you put Kevin Feige completely in charge of Marvel and look where it's at. What is the like when they did the She-Hulk and they made fun of him, made him a robot? I know, right? I was just like, um... All right. Um, it says, in July, Perlmutter began lobbying for his pal, calling Chapek, Disney CFO Christine McCarthy, and Disney board member Safra Katz less than a week after Peltz dined with Chapek in Paris. The time Peltz approached Chapek, he was dealing with the CEO who had been absolutely convinced just a month earlier he was about to face execution by the Disney board. Jeez, oh man, what happened? Instead, the Vita board agreed to extend his contract, though it was uh, backdated, giving him less than a three-year term. The board presented his result as as uh, unanimous, and he got ousted anyway. Yeah, so, I mean, that's what I'm saying. The board agreed to, you know, keep him back in there. And then the board was behind. They were in agreement with him on a lot of these choices that went bad, but now they're trying to say, oh, no, we're the best board. We're the, we've done such a great job. You're partially responsible for everything that where it's at now. Yeah, so this is really interesting. Um in his memoir, Bob Iger wrote that Perlmutter had stood in the way of Marvel's first films with uh, black and female leads. I called Ike and told him uh, to tell his team to stop putting up roadblocks in order that we put out both Black Panther and Captain Marvel in the production. Uh, Feige sealed his control over Marvel when he took responsibility for television, animation, and print editorial in 2019. So... Perlmutter is going to be like, yeah, Marvel is not in a good state right now. Phase four is an effing disaster, and I told you so. Yeah, but Black Panther did really well. Captain Marvel did well, but it, the audiences were, and people don't really like Brie Larson. But, I mean, I know he was behind like them not doing a lot of things with female characters because he didn't think they could carry things. I think Black Widow got root, got shafted. I think they, they should have done something with her much sooner than they did, and that's probably his fault. Yeah. So, apparently, this has been going on for a long time, and then when Disney really missed the mark... He pounced, pelts, mm -hmm. and uh, both pelts and... Well, that's when he saw, a, a, you know, a, a chink in the armor he could go into. Yeah, that's where you put the knife in, right? You mm -hmm. put the knife in and twist, and a if lot... that dragon loses the scale, that's where you go for it. Yeah, I mean, look, the vultures are hovering for Disney at this point. And, uh, you know, they're weak. They're a, a huge company. They're, they're very weak. And we've been telling God, we've been telling you guys for so long, this company is not in good shape. But what I don't get is... So this guy gets a, they get a board seat. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And apparently there might be one there because they, that one person's leaving. So they get a board seat and they have a say in who comes in next. And there's a bunch of other board members. I mean, it's really not that big of a deal. It's just, they don't get complete control. And my next thing is what are they planning that they're so worried that this one group can derail everything that they're this upset, this worried, and they're putting out, you know, complete, you know, presentations, and everything else to make sure that, you know, to sway everybody to their side. Starts with one seat. One I'm just like, seat. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was just like, I don't, I mean, I mean, I don't think he's going to probably get it. I think that they're going to vote. Well, it depends on people, how pissed people are. Cause people are really mad about like the parks and stuff, but not the share. Their shareholders are mad. They aren't making money, but they really don't care about the consumers as much as like the consumers care about themselves. It's not about you. At the end of the day, like, oh, look, we're going to get some more flexibility and value in our parks. But you're not because it's, it might seem that way, but whatever's going to make them more money. Yeah. So this is interesting. It, it sounds like 
Christy McCarthy could get axed next too, right? They said they believe Iger wanted to ease out CFO Christy McCarthy, but much more gently than Chapek and Daniel. Press reports had portrayed her as the one who raised alarms about Chapek's management with the board in September and who subsequently called Iger to gauge his interest in returning. Some veterans of the company wars don't buy that scenario. The board didn't know until she told them that smells fishy. I, I, we said that in the one video too. I'm like, how do they not know? So, yeah, they're like in the wake of Iger's return. Some sources believe McCarthy was vulnerable for having backed JPEG too enthusiastically until she didn't. So they think McCarthy might have actually been in cahoots with Peltz before this whole thing. Like this whole thing was schemed and planned over the summer with Ike Perlmutter. And then as soon as they missed, you know, the vultures were, were ready to descend. I don't know if I believe McCarthy was in on that, but you know. I don't know. So it's going to be really interesting to see what happens. I mean, I, I, I got to tell you the truth. I agree 100% with Tryon's uh, take on Disney at this point. Disney is a company that's weak. It's trying to put on a front that it's doing well. They said that uh, Tryon, they agree that uh, Tryon is right about Disney, that uh, many of their wounds are self-inflicted and they need to be addressed. And again, you know, you mentioned Reedy Creek. They've lost, I mean, just look at what has happened the last couple of years. They've lost Reedy Creek. Um, they've, uh, it's been hit or miss at the box office. Marvel is not nearly the brand it was a couple of years ago. Star Wars is not the brand it was a few years ago. Well, even you know, Iger was saying that he thought it was brand fatigue and then he was gone and JPEG tripled down on it. But yeah, so Moffat Nathanson, who's one of the people that get to, you know, the groups that get to talk at every you know, investor call and ask yeah. questions. They're like saying they agree with trying. They, they think that Bob Iger being back means that they're going to fix it themselves. They don't need somebody else to come in. But they agree that a lot of the points they're bringing up are fair points. They're a lot of the points that, that we've been bringing up. Disney's not in good shape, guys. I don't know what to tell you. We've been telling you this for years. It's like they are headed for an iceberg. And uh, so they're going to go like, out of existence or bankrupt. No. no, no. But there's definitely choppy seas. I'm waiting for them to announce no, Titanic 2 no, and then the no, Titanic no. series on, on Disney+. No. They probably do the series. Series. Tales from the Iceberg. All right. Uh, all right, guys. So we're going to wrap this up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, and we'll talk later. Bye.